most beautiful thing about the M3 is the sound that the engine makes. With that new exhaust, it is ridiculous. I've never been a huge fan of like V8s and the V8 sound. I love four cylinders, specifically in inline four, AKA an Evo. But that high revving V8 just sounds so damn good. Every time I drive the car, since I got the new exhaust on it, which has been like twice or three times now, the whole time I don't listen to the radio. I just have the exhaust valves open and let that thing rip. It's so sick. All right, boys, so here's the plan for today. We're supposed to meet up with someone at three o'clock, so in two hours to try and get the other headlight working for the M3 because only the driver's side is working right now. In the meantime, we're gonna work on the Evo 8. I know you guys have been dying to see what is going on with the Evo 8. Why why we have not put the dash in. Let's rewind a few days back and let me show you guys what went down. So here is how it looks after we blew it off. It could definitely be a little bit better. I feel like we weren't quite fast enough when we were getting the actual suede material on. Cause you only have about 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and get this thing back in the car. We have the dash installed up in the car. After looking at this dash some more, I don't really like how it turned out. It looked really, really good at first. And then when we blew off all the excess suede material, there's like some streaking and light areas I feel like that I am not very happy with. I really don't want to redo it, but you can see some light areas up in there. And then all over here, it looks like there is a little bit of streaking going on. So I'm going to try to do it again. If it doesn't work, oh well. Really don't think that is gonna work, but I guess we'll see. We got it all finished up. Made sure we got it done within the 10 minutes because I think that was a problem last time is we took too long after we laid the adhesive down to get the actual suede on there. So I made sure I got it done quick this time. I just don't think that it's gonna look good trying to overcoat the previous suede. I guess we'll see in about 24 hours. I'll see you guys then. All right, now that you watched all that, dash is done, dash is good to go. Looks a million times better now. I'm stoked with it. Hopefully you guys are stoked with it. We're gonna be throwing it back in the car today. Should be relatively easy. And I think we may put different wheels on the car today as well. Here is how she turned out. This is the finished look. Much more even than before. I am pretty stoked. All right, boys, dash is completely back together. We do still need to install our gauges, so that's why we have an open hole right there. But here's how she looks. I think it looks really, really sick. And as you guys can see, we got our carbon fiber piece in there that we made. So that looks kind of cool. I'm not too stoked with how that piece came out. We're definitely gonna be redoing everything. I'm gonna get really good at one piece and then I wanna do a ton of other stuff as well. It'd be sick to like have a full on custom interior build on one of the cars. I don't know which one. One of them though is gonna have some wild interior stuff done, but that dash turned out really nice. I'm gonna go link up with this BMW tech right now and see if we can't get the M3 headlights up and running. If it is what we think it is, which is the FRM, the footwell, some sort of module, um, it should be like a 10, 15 minute fix. But if it's something more, which I hope it's not, it might take a little bit longer because as we all know, BMWs and their electrical problems I just, I don't know. My brother Austin was here and he's checking out the Duramax and he walks by and he's like, bro, what's up with your shock? Check out my brand new Bilstein shock. It's got a nice little 45 degree bend on her. Whack. on the car but we did not get the car fixed 
every time that they reset the FRM, it would keep coming back with a short circuit in the passenger side running lamp is what it was called on the software. So I know something in the headlight, we already tested that by putting the passenger side onto the driver's side of the car and everything in the passenger side headlight works fine. Some people online are saying it could be the actual FRM, the module itself is bad, so we may need to replace that. Before we do that though, I want to kind of dig into it, see if there's any sort of weird wiring or like split wires, grounded out wire somewhere, just something obvious before we actually go ahead and throw a new module at it. But I'm gonna head back to the shop right now. I love this car, I just wish it was a little bit faster. Head back to the shop now and get back to work on the Evo 8 may tear into this car today as well because i really just want to get this thing fixed i guess that means we officially have our first bmw electrical nightmare i've always heard horror stories hopefully it's not that bad with this car this boy is all finished up let me know boys what do you think you like it you don't like it i like it i think it looks really good i don't know if i'll do it on more cars kind of was a lot of work pulling the whole dash out one thing i really want to do like i mentioned earlier though is get better at carbon fiber and do a ton of carbon fiber panels. I feel like carbon can be overdone, so we'd have to kind of, kind of, you know, think it out. But if we had that carbon and that whole piece carbon, probably this carbon, definitely this carbon, and we could even do like those in carbon fiber if we somehow did like a black headliner. And if we really want to get crazy, that 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 piece there, that piece there, I don't know. If I got good and quick at it. We could do a lot of stuff and it'd be insane. Now I did pick up a ton of these LED lights, these little LED bulbs. Remember when we went to swap these out, which we did, those look beautiful. We didn't have the right style for that right there. So I just bought this giant pack off eBay. There's like 20 of them in here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and swap that out. And we'll also have some for other cars in the future as well. This is what a factory bummy ass light looks like. Okay, all yellow. and much better. All right, hear me out guys. This is gonna draw a lot of controversy. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this, but you know what? I kind of realized, I've kind of come to realize that no matter what you do in life, no matter your opinion, people are gonna disagree with it. And this is just my opinion. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I've never really seen the hype behind TE37s. Don't hate me, okay? They look good, they're a good looking wheel, yeah, I already see the comments. They're a good looking wheel, all right? But for the amount of money that someone spends on TE37s, I think there's much, much better options. And also with that being said, the, T, the TE37s on the blue Evo, I don't know how to say this without sounding stupid, but <laughs> the XXRs look better on the blue Evo, in my opinion, than the TE37s do. And maybe, maybe it's just the color of the car or the color of the wheels. Here is how they look. I do think that the red doesn't really flow with the blue and the yellow. The all black wheel would look much better, but I'm not gonna go and just destroy these very expensive wheels by repowder coating them all black. That would just, that would not be okay. We're gonna be putting our good old $600 wheels back on the car instead of these $3,000 wheels. They probably look better on the black eight versus the blue eight, but these boys right here, these good old XXR 521s, I think they are, are gonna go back on this car. We do have one XXR that got curbed. Remember that? I'm gonna show you guys how I would go about fixing that. The proper way to do it would be to have the tire dismounted, fully strip the wheel, fix the curbing by welding it and grinding it down, and then repowder coating it. But being that they're such cheap wheels, we can get away with just doing like a quick JB weld touch up and like a little bit of rattle can or a little bit of touch up paint. So let's find the wheel that's curbed up and fix it up. All right, this thing's definitely a little bit more roached than I remember the roachiness being. So we have all of that right there. Got some nice little chunks right there. And we got some more over there. So it's like a third of the wheel needs to be repaired. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mask off the entire wheel, except for this little lip right here. And how I'm gonna try to make this look as best as possible is we're gonna just repaint this whole lip all the way around. Before we do that, we're gonna get out a little grinder, or you could probably even use a file if you don't have access to air tools. And we're gonna smooth a lot of this out 
if some of it needs to be filled in we're just going to use some jb weld fill it in repaint the lip and we're going to see how good we can make this for like five bucks ten bucks So we got it all ground down and smoothed out as best as we can without filling anything, but there's still some pretty chunky, some deep chunky areas. The only JB weld we have here, and I really don't feel like going to the store, so we're gonna be using this, is the plastic bonder that we used on the headlights. This stuff dried so freaking hard though. I didn't really see a difference between this and regular JB weld. I'm sure there is a difference, but I guess we're gonna see if it just falls off of aluminum and doesn't bond to aluminum. We're gonna mix some of this up fill in some of those chunky areas and then grind that smooth and then we can paint it the wheel hello governor hello Hawk. what up do you want enchiladas tonight I like tacos. Sorry, I didn't mean enchiladas. I meant lasagna. Ooh, lasagna is one of my favorite dishes to mankind. That's what I meant the whole time. Right? We're going to let that JB weld set up for a little bit, probably 30, 45 minutes, and we can grind it, file it, sand it smooth. We'll be good to go. And then what is that? Like, a, It's almost like a satin black. Do I have a flat black? Oh, I got satin black. Look at that. It's like it was meant to be. Satin black should match the good old XXR is good enough. I gotta let you guys in on a little little secret, a little tip, all right? The XXR caps that come with these wheels are so hideous. If I had them here, I would show them to you. They stick out like a good half inch. The flat caps that you can get online look so much better. I know there's no stickers on them right now or no decals whatsoever. And we're gonna get something whipped up for the, for the center caps, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend buying flat caps. They are just a touch small, so let me show you guys what I'm doing for that. So if you take the cap, you can see it just drops right down in the wheel. It doesn't really clip in, kind of flops back and forth. Let's pop it out, take the string off the inside, and then we're gonna heat up these four tabs and push them out just a little bit. Put the ring back on, it'll clip right into place and she'll never fall out. All right guys, center caps are all finished up. This JB weld is pretty much all the way hard. It should be a little bit more hard before I start forming it to the wheel. Ain't nobody got time for that. We're gonna use this file. I like to use a file on this lip surface right here just to get it as flat as possible. And then we can paint this guy. We got it all ground down. You can see exactly where all the curbing was because that's where all the JB weld is now. This paint is literally a perfect match. I'm looking at the wheel right now. I I can tell because I know where we fixed it at, but if you were just like standing here looking at a car, you would never know that this wheel was pretty destroyed at one point. If these were some super expensive wheels, of course I would have taken a lot more time, but being that they're $150 for one brand new wheel, I'm not all that worried about it. So let's pop off the last TE get on the xxr that just sounds weird going from tees to xxrs but it is what it is get this car back on the ground see how she looks there's just something about that little lip that's on there it just looks amazing. Now I'm not saying that the XXRs are a better wheel in any way, shape or form over the TEs. I know they're not. They're heavier, 
They're way weaker. They're not iconic. They're XXRs, but they do look good. I should throw a little disclaimer out there. TEs belong on some cars. R32s to 34s, specifically R34s, they look insane on. What do we got? One day left for Vlogmas. I'm pretty sure. Today's the 23rd, so I'll probably record tomorrow. And I'm not exactly sure if we're gonna be filming on Christmas day or not. I got obviously a lot of time spent with family and whatnot. So if we do anything cool on Christmas day, obviously I'll record, but stay tuned for one more, one last Vlogmas episode. Long day, hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully we can get the BMW fixed. Hopefully we can get the lift or the shock on the truck fixed. I'm glad we got the Evo 8 finally back together. I know you guys, so many of you guys were wondering what the hell was going on with the dash. And now you know that I just wanted it better. So peace out boys, I'll see you tomorrow. I have a question for you. What wheels look better on the blue Evo 8? The mesh boys or the five spoke boys? XXRs or the TEs with the red? XXRs. Shirt? Serious? Yeah.